Hello and welcome to my channel. Now, you may have noticed that we're in a different place than we normally are. The lighting's not the best, but this is the best I can do. And this is the reason that I have not done videos over the summer. I am just never alone and it's never quiet in my house. My husband is doing his best to keep the children quiet. So if you hear background noise, I apologize, but you know, they live here too. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Goblins. Now keep in mind, I've never done a sponsored video before ever. This is the first one because I thought this would actually be really useful for math teachers. So if you're not a math teacher, this video is not for you, but feel free to share it with a math teacher that you know and love. This is their website. So their tagline is the math app from the future. And their mission is to speed up math learning with instant visual feedback. And it says you can join the wait list for one month free and you can invite friends for one year free. And right now we're just signing up for early access. The app has not launched yet, so we're going to see a demo in a moment. But I just wanted to preface this with, this is an app. Right now we're just doing waitlist signups. They're not selling anything yet, but if they're saying that one month is free, that does mean that eventually there's a cost. We don't know what that cost is yet. So they have not shared that information, but I just wanna show you what this does. Last night I started downloading this onto my iPad. The app is not yet available, it has not launched yet, but I wanted to just be prepared for the video and then I decided to stop what I was doing because I didn't want anything to be missed. So, um, it does say I have progress, I didn't do anything, I really got to this page and stopped, so I'm going to click resume. And they say, hey, welcome in a second, you'll get to solve a problem. And I'm gonna try to help you, but first let me show you a few ways I can help. So I'm gonna click OK. For example, you can show me your work at any step, and I'll give hints or redirect you as needed. And once you get the final answer, I'll mark it right, and we'll move on to the next problem. Okay, your turn. Try drawing the answer, and then hit OK. So this is available for iPad or Android phones or iPhones. So you can write with your finger and that's what I'll use for the video rather than a stylus. Nice, let me just erase that for you. You can also speak your answer or ask things like, I'm stuck, what should I do next? Or what's the formula again? Give that a try. I'm stuck, what should I do next? Coming in loud and clear. Okay, here's the first problem. Go on ahead. I'll be here. Okay, so I'm going to get this wrong on purpose just to see what happens. I'm not going to edit this for whatever it's doing. I wonder if it really needs me to turn this around. Oops, adding the sides gives the perimeter of one face, not the volume of the whole cube. True. What does volume mean? How would you calculate it? Give it another try. Okay, so let's erase what we have here. Um, all right, let's make another mistake. Let's do two times two and see what it says. I took a guess at what this part says. Feel free to help me out, or if it's good as is, give me the okay. I guess I can't read my writing. It's good to know. Close, but you squared two instead of cubing it. Think about what volume means in three-dimensional. Okay, so I like that because it did give a How different hint this time. How many should you multiply? Try again. And it was a good hint that it's guiding, so I like that. That's what we try to do as teachers. Um, it does take a minute, though. All right, so let's put in two cubed. I didn't put the answer yet, just two cubes. Let's see what he says. Okay, 
You got it. Two to the power of three is the right expression. Now evaluate it to get a number and don't forget the units. Oh, I You've like that. You've almost solved it. That was sweet. Now let's see the next problem. Right, I'm going to just go through and do this one. Actually, I'll make a mistake again. All right, so let's say that my mistake is going to be that this is, oh, I can't write on top of the diagram. I can write anywhere else. So that's good to know. I hope the video goes well with this being in a uh, portrait mode instead of landscape. And if not, I'm sorry. I just wanted to kind of keep it how students would see it. Um, cause usually on the phone, you're going to hold it vertically. So I decided to keep the iPad vertical. All right. So I cannot draw on the diagram, but I can draw in any of the other space. So I will note where we have the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. And let's say I'm going to set it up as cosine of B. Or they put beta here but I'm gonna go with B equals and let's say I do opposite over hypotenuse and I put 12 over 13 let's see what it says just want to double check that I read this area right hit ok if it looks right or give it a little tweak if not Oops, looks like you use the opposite side instead of the adjacent side in the cosine ratio. Remember, Sokotoa? Give it another shot. All right, I'm trying to scroll so I can put this back to where it is. Okay, so it's two fingers and I can scroll it up and down. Um, okay, so let's try putting the adjacent. I'll click OK. So it seems that it was... Hey, just want to make sure I read this section, right? Yes, you do. Um, it seems like it was confused by me putting the labels for O, A, and H around the side. So that's something to keep Kill. in mind. Okay. Um, so I guess we're good there. Um, they're giving me another cosine question. So for this one, um, 17 is the missing hypotenuse. And cosine, this is the opposite, adjacent hypotenuse is 17. So cosine of B or beta is going to be 8 over 17. Just want to double check that I read and this it still doesn't like... right. Hit OK. Oh, okay. I guess it doesn't really look like an H the way I, I did it with my finger. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. It might have a hard time reading like you're you're writing with your finger so maybe i'll try the stylus next just Killing to see it. how it reacts oops I did that with like my um this is part of your hand called like the side of my hand here and touch the ipad all right so um that, that's probably the problem with the stylus is i do rest my hand on my ipad when i use it All right, let's hit OK and see what it says about that step so far. I like that I could either solve the whole thing or just do like one step at a time for it to look at so that I mean, that's what your students need to do sometimes is they they are working through the problem. Great they work get stuck. transforming the equation. What methods could you use next to solve for X? They get stuck on a step and Keep then they exploring. need... Keep exploring. You've got this. And then they need like a hint or something because they're not sure where to go from there. So I like that they could just get partway into the problem and then it will give them feedback.
I'm just going to go ahead and finish solving it. I wonder if it's going to be able to read the six. Big brain energy right there. Okay, so I'm going to actually stop there because the video is getting a little bit long. It does take a little bit of time in between each step, which is fine. That's something to warn the students about is that it takes time to think. It's got to look everything over. And, you know, it's artificial intelligence. It's not the same as our intelligence. So I just wouldn't want students to get oh, what's the word? Like frustrated or think that there's something wrong because it's taking a while. So I just wanted to share a little bit more from their website. Here they have a demo video that you can watch. I'll have the link below in the description box. But they go through the demo with an actual student so you can see how it worked for them. But it's similar to what we just did. And some of the details we have. It says, finally, AI that works for math students designed by a math teacher. New AI advances make it possible for us to differentiate better than ever before. But anyone who has taught for 10 minutes knows that a chat bot isn't going to cut it. Goblins is what we wish we had. So it says that it helps students solve problems naturally, it personalizes for their level and interests, and it has tighter learning loops for stronger conceptual understanding. So I was really impressed with the way that it came back to like guide me with that volume question in particular, the just what it came up with to get me to the right answer, I thought was amazing. Now for teachers, we can actually assign to students some of this. So I'm going to share that, but essentially you're going to pick a topic, you're going to give students a code, and you're going to track the student progress. And here's a little bit more information. It's a, it has cross-platform support, FERPA, and state compliance. So in New York, this is a big thing. Um, I would, to use this in my school, which I haven't gone through the process yet of requesting such for this, but um, I'd have to send it to our tech person who has to actually draw up a contract specifically between our school and this app but the fact that it's already telling us that it's FERPA and state compliant and I can show you where but it says it's compliant with all 50 states in terms of protecting student identity and information it says it is so I'm going to take their word for it but it would still be up to our technology director to get this going at our school so I wouldn't actually be able to use it with my students right now as is <clears throat> um, it fully supports 12 languages, has tons of LMS integrations. I would like to know specifically which ones, like hopefully Google Classroom. I feel like that's the main one. Um, and great for in-class work and homework. We have reviews from some teachers, which again, you can look at this on your own if you would like. You can schedule a demo if you want to have this available at your school with your admin or department head. And if you're a teacher, you can get on the wait list. And again, you get a free month when you sign up. I don't know what the cost is going to be after that first month, though. Here we have some FAQs. Which classes do you support? Which curriculum? So, so far, they have pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, pre-calculus, 7th and 8th grade math, and I am 1 and 2. Not sure what those are. But so far, we are not up to geometry yet. But they're working to get more. How does Goblins handle privacy and security? This is where they say that they are compliant with all 50 states. How hard is it to get set up? And they say it takes 10 minutes to make an account, select a topic, send your students an access code, and their download links. So that's encouraging to know that it's not difficult or time consuming to set up, because you know how it is, back to school, we have so much thrown at us, we don't want something that's gonna take even longer. Um, what devices do we work on? And it's going to work on all iPhones, Android phones, and tablets. So that's what I demoed on was an iPad. It's a tablet, but it would also work on phones. And there's also a web experience for Chromebook and other laptops and desktops. I don't have access to demo that um, at this time, but it's something that they have. And what if students get off track on their devices? This is cool, so we'll alert you in real time when students close the app so you can know when students get off track. Amazing. Um, can you see students' performance? And yes, you can watch them work live from the teacher view, and they create a digest at the top to see who's struggling most and with which concepts. 
So you have everything you need. Now as a teacher, if you want to assign work using the Goblins app, you are brought to a form. They're going to ask for your name. I'm going to put in just my first name. Um, an email address. And again, keep in mind this is in demo mode. So when I open these things up, they're going to be blank. So it asks for a unit and there's a button for me to add it. And these are all blank. So I'm assuming that when I have my account set up, I'm able to say what course it is um, or what unit we're in. That's what they're asking for, but I don't see unit here. But there's information here. So I'm just going to select the first one that's there. Um, topic title, it says we'll include four to ten problems in this topic. Email us if you'd like more. So you go to add and these are all blank, but I'm assuming that if I were to do this once everything is live that they would have different topics for me to choose from. So I'm just going to click on the first one. Um, the start date. Now this is where it's interesting and I think it's important to know and maybe this will change, but let's say I wanted to start this today. I'm recording on 7-31-2024 and I put in a due date. Let's say it's due in a week. Okay, when I was doing this last night, it was telling me that they needed more time and that I couldn't just make up an assignment like the day of. Um, access code for your students. Let's just say I put it in like math one, you can put whatever I guess. Um, and then I'm going to click submit. Okay, now it does say, please do not select a start date within the next 72 hours. This gives us time to manually confirm all assignments before they go live. So it's not just that they're generating the assignments automatically. It's actually going through people, which is interesting. So if I want to do an assignment, I would have to wait. 72 hours is three days, right? Yes. Okay. Let's say I just pick August 4th and then I click submit. We will send you an email once your access code is live. So that's the process for creating your own. But like I said at the beginning, right now this is in demo mode. It has not launched yet. So it's something to keep your eye on. So definitely get on the wait list so you can be notified when this is live. If this is something that you're interested in. If you have questions, you can ask them below and I will do my best to get an answer for you. But that's it for now. I hope this was helpful or at least enjoyable and hopefully this becomes something that we can really use with our students and really get them to the help because I feel like all students kind of want like a one-on-one -on -one tutor and just the way that schools are set up now it's really hard for us to provide that for them. So this seems like a good solution to that. So that is everything and as always thanks for watching.